can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much. He can give us a second chance. I just want to say I'm so impressed by how you managed to make this being. I mean, it's a time traveling, universe traveling bad guy. Yeah. And you managed to take him down to earth and make him believable and sort of human. Yeah. You're an interesting man. Scott Lang. But how as an actor do you even start to contemplate how do I inhabit a, a practically immortal being whose mission it is to destroy the whole universe and make him believable? Whoa, bro, that's a huge question. But but I think the answer is I don't I didn't think about that part. You know, I didn't think about the multiverse or any of that, you know, at first. Of course it has to be taken into account. But first I was thinking, what is he? Who is he? And the and the beautiful thing about it is he's you and me. You know, Kang the Conqueror is first and foremost a human being. And mm. then he has all these other uh, accoutrements that make him, you know, th that guy. You know, it makes him him, as it were. Um, and so I looked at that conquering archetype. You know, I looked at what would make somebody do that. Just anybody, any individual. What would make you get to that point with that much aggression, with that much heartbreak, with that much loss, fear? You know, what would make you do that? And, and just dug into that and then connected to my scene partners, which is which is quite easy to do because they're so human, as it were. I always theorized it was possible, but to be here, the subatomic universe, this changes everything we know about life, evolution, our place in the galaxy. Holy That guy looks like broccoli. Your career is so amazing, so distinguished. Again, so many of the pearls in my collection are with you. I mean, some of the stuff you've done throughout your career, you know, shot a bazooka in Los Angeles, chased treasures in Colombia, ruled <laughs> Wall Street twice. I couldn't help but wonder, after doing all that sort of stuff, does it still surprise you when you read a script and it says, you have to pilot a futuristic spaceship while battling a floating <laughs> flying head in an armored metal suit. <laughs> no, it's, it's taken me a, a while from from the first of these Ant Man shows to realize to realize that truthfully anything is possible, anything. And so I, I just I sit and watch and wonder. You don't really see. You know the scripts don't really come to you until about three weeks before we start shooting. They, they're always working on re remakes and all of this to get some idea. But uh, this one on the quantum mania, the idea of 90% of a movie being shot in, in another world, uh, another planet with other beings and everything else uh, is really extraordinary. And they, and they did a spectacular job. And for me, even being involved in the picture, having no sense until you went to the theater, uh, to see some of your supporting actors. I'm thinking of the bar scene, for instance, when they were, yeah, some of them were in makeup, and but other ones were created. Um, they were holding poles to give you some idea of their, their size and the immensity of them, uh, like, like the broccoli man, uh, for one. Uh, and the imagination just, you know, runs wild. I mean, it runs wild. So you're open to expecting anything. We'll stop them together. I got really lucky because two of the sets that I worked on, which was a large chunk of the movie for me, were in a stage called The Volume, which is um, a stage where all of the walls and ceiling are covered with thousands of LED screens that are projecting exactly what is actually happening, what you're actually seeing in the scene. So I would step onto stage and I would literally step into the quantum realm. Visually, it was all around me. It was magical, it was enchanting. It was really like more like playing than working because I didn't have to do all the work of imagining the world. I didn't have to do the work of trying to picture the ship coming down or the creature coming across. It was all there. Okay, I have a suit. Yeah, I noticed. You okay? Yes. Look, momentum, right? Jump, tap, right? One move, jump, tap. I know how to do it, Dad. Oh, do you? Yes! Really? Because it didn't look like it from I my end. I messed up on the timing. Jump! Like that. You see what I did? You see what I did? No. You're like this small. I would never be able to keep a straight face around Paul Rudd. 
No. Uh, I mean, how difficult is that? No, there's no way. You're already smiling too much as it is. You would never get through a moment with him. <laughs> but I swear. Yeah, exactly. You are a great reflection of what I actually look like in between takes and during takes. <laughs> I broke in every single scene. I thought I was going to get fired. There was one day I was looking at, I looked at Paul and I'm like, Paul, like this has to stop. I'm not doing a good job. Like I'm making cuts. And he said, no. Don't feel bad. He's like, the truth is, is if you and I are laughing and creating an energy and having chemistry like this, the audience is going to feel it. And that's what they're going to take away. We're still saying the lines. He's like, you're getting through it. There's this magical thing called editing. And he's right. <laughs> I think it's kind of like if you and I go to a concert and the band plays their song and then in the middle of the song, they just start jamming. Now we're all part of like a new experience that's better than what was just planned. It's better than what was just on the page. And that happened because our director, Peyton Reed, really encouraged it, you know? It was really cool that on the biggest project of my life, <laughs> I was encouraged to like try stuff and fail and take a risk. And um, that was different than what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be more like stand on your mark, say your line. But Peyton Reed wanted us to improvise, not because he wanted to use it particularly, but because he wanted us to have that energy together. And I, I think you feel it. Where are we? 